Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. We are going to go way back in the Gospel of Matthew. If you've been using this in accordance with, uh, with, with JCM in its original iteration as part of the Redemption Church, then you're going to suddenly feel whiplash because all of a sudden we're going back to chapter 2. We left these passages uncovered like uh, three months ago on purpose so that at Christmas time coming back to them, it would seem fresh and new and not as redundant. So that's why if you go from the beginning of the fulfillment series, um, you know, you start off with the passage of, of chapter 1, 1 through 17, and chapter 3, 1 through 17, and sermon 1 of this series. We left that uncovered so that we would be able to go through that passage now at Christmas time. Um, so stay tuned. We return to your regularly, scare, uh, regularly scheduled narrative in the text. We're going to go to chapter 20, verses 1 through 16, again, for our first sermon of the new year. All right, that's going to be sermon number 17, Is It Too Late to Be Saved? But for today, because in its original iteration here in, in Christmas time, 2022, the, the Redemption Church is celebrating Christmas, uh, we're going to have devotions that set us up for that so that when we arrive on Christmas Day, we have uh, gone through the remaining chapters that we did not cover in the opening sermons and devotions and curricula. So here's chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we saw his star at its rising and have come to worship him. Remarkable. These Persian mystics had studied the stars and were familiar with some of the prophecies about the coming Messiah, and they have arrived in the days of King Herod in Bethlehem of Judea looking to worship this one born king of the Jews. The wise men, the Magi, likely were not adherents to the Old Testament law of God, but they were fascinated as they studied what was happening. They knew that God was at work somehow in all of this, and it could, it's possible that they weren't truly saved, if you will, in this end of the Old Testament, beginning of the New Testament sense until they saw Jesus. But they knew God was at work. They knew that something was happening. Wise men arrived from the east in Jerusalem, uh, and they, they've gone to Herod. Now, obviously, they don't know everything that's going on because they just went to a murderous psychopath and asked him, <laughs> unwittingly having spurred, uh, uh, having spurred Herod into a murderous rage that would lead to the slaughter of the boys in Bethlehem. But that's not the wise men's fault. That's Herod's fault. And our devotions next week will also talk about how much of this was even used according to the foreknowledge of God and even incorporated into the prophecies of Revelation. So um, stay tuned, all right? If you're, uh, if you're hanging out at, at, at Grandma's house and you're looking for, you know, uh, some devotional material, Revelation chapter 12 is on the docket for next week's devotions because of these events. So we're going to look at this in its original iteration and we'll talk about it in its uh, eschatological context as well next week. But for now, can we just take a moment and thank God for the wise men? Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? Here's at the beginning of Jesus' life, and then this is how he would be crucified. King of the Jews. The wording on the sign over the cross of Christ would be disputed before the crucifixion was carried out. Finally, Pontius Pilate suddenly gets a spine. It's over the seemingly petty semantics, but for once Pilate was right. They didn't like the sign King of the Jews, posted in multiple languages over the Christ. And so they said, no, he claimed he was king of the Jews. Write that, change that wording, say he claimed that he was king of the Jews. And then finally, Pontius Pilate, having been the world's biggest pushover, that's what happens when you don't know what truth is. You don't have a logos. You don't have a presupposition. You don't have the fear of the Lord for the beginning of knowledge. You just do whatever the crowd tells you, even giving away a murderer like Barabbas and having Jesus, the Son of God, flogged and ultimately crucified. So for once, the guy had, makes a stand and it's for something, but it's over the wording of the sign over the innocent man he's having crucified. They said, no, he made this claim about himself that he's king of the Jews. Actually, all the way back in Matthew chapter 2, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? 
Even the wise men knew the truth. So, to his credit, for what it's worth, Pontius Pilate was at least right about one thing, in that he didn't let them change the sign, even if it was for the wrong reasons. We saw his star at its rising and have come to worship him. If you're curious about this, there's this thing that was put together. Um, is it Matthew Larson? What is his name again? This guy put together a series called Bethlehem Star, and he kind of uses software that tracks the movement of the stars to the sky, believing it's possible that the Bethlehem star actually could have been this alignment of multiple planets forming the brightest star we'd ever seen in our lives and from the perspective of the wise men. And so it's, it's probable, it's plausible, um, and it, you know, it's not, it's not gospel truth, okay? So I'll just recommend it for you with my Bible closed if you're, in, if you're curious about his theory. But now, opening the word, the bigger purpose is this. The sovereign hand of God was at work in this star, whether it was a miraculous light in the sky or it was preordained according to the movements of the planets from our perspective on the earth for this time. In either event, God is sovereign. And in either event, they have been summoned here by the movement of the heavens above to this time in this place. They speak to the worst person imaginable about it, but even through that, God is going to be at work in the fulfillment of prophecy. God was at work in the stars to bring the wise men where they were, when they were. You were not born at an arbitrary time. God was at work to the heavens above to bring you where you are, when you are there. Would you take a moment and go before the Lord? God, you brought the wise men using the heavens to guide them to you upon your birth. You're even at work through their inadvertent tipping of the cards to Herod and what followed. You would redeem even the worst of these. So God, here we are now reading this text. We see the heavens display the glory of the Lord. We believe, God, that your birth was the fulfillment of what was prophesied. And we have come to worship you, born King of the Jews, today King of kings and Lord of lords, the King of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.